Welcome to Listen to 360. In this video, I would like to talk about uh, binaural playback on headphones of Dolby Atmos mixes. As you will have noticed, uh, the demo uh, 1 and 2 that I published on YouTube uh, with an Ambix, uh, an Ambisonics export out of the Dolby renderer, uh, played back with a rather dry voice uh, in a not too convincing uh, binaural playback if you listen to the 360 version. That is because there is a, a dry voice with uh, almost no reflections and if you don't have reflections or uh, a room, a virtual room, the binaural playback will be uh, very compromised because your brain doesn't have any uh, cues uh, of the room and the speaker positions in the room with their reflections. As you probably know, Apple recently uh, released uh, Spatial Audio with Dolby Atmos uh, mixes on uh, their music site. And um, they use uh, their own system of translating Dolby Atmos mixes to binaural playback, so for use on uh, headphones. In the Dolby Atmos mixing uh, render engine, you can uh, do a binaural export or listen to binaural live. Um, and you can also select various uh, settings for uh, binaural renders, uh, distance settings that I explained with the, the off position being no uh, uh, specific binaural render of that element because you can uh, set these uh, settings for all the beds and different uh, objects. Um, and the other settings are uh, near, mid and far. Now, of course, uh, I have made available the four different possi possibilities of the binaural renderings for the two demos that I already published. So you can have a listen to those. Uh, I have put uh, links in the description of the, rel of the, rel of the relevant videos. But uh, what I would like to try now is uh, do an actual speaker playback and record this with uh, an Ambisonics mic. Being an, an Octa mic that you can see here beneath the camera, it's uh, an eight channel Ambisonics mic, which is near uh, second order Ambisonics. It is recorded on the sound device mix pre 10 here and two with uh, the iPad showing the levels that are being recorded on the eight channels. The Dolby Atmos uh, file is uh, playing live now from the uh, Pro Tools computer and the Atmos renderer that you can see in front of you, the Pro Tools computer that you can see on the left hand side which has the, the different uh, tracks that will be playing. And also uh, I show you the reverb uh, that is running here, which is a Stratus 3D. Um, and the actual panning that is on the main uh, voice channel, which sends panning metadata to the Dolby renderer. I will play back this on a 7.1.4 speaker system. But this room has uh, 18 speakers, so uh, I can test various uh, playbacks with uh, height speakers or top speakers. So the first playback we'll do will be with uh, uh, top front left that you can see on the left front height there. And then on the right hand side, there is a top front right speaker. You see little lights because those are active speakers. And then on the back, you have the top front right, no, sorry. <laughs> The, the rear top right and the left top right. Um, this will be the first play playback we'll do, but we'll also play back uh, the same section of the demo two on the height speakers. So instead of those ceiling speakers, we will use the height speakers, which will be, which will be the left height that you can see there uh, at the top left corner of the screen. And then there is this uh, height speaker on the right hand side of the screen and then there is the right height in the back and the left height in the back. The bad channels are the left center right and then the left side, the right side and the right rear and the left rear. So the first playback we'll do is with the ceiling speakers. In this video, we're going to further explore the panning possibilities of a mono Dolby Atmos object. In the previous video, the panning followed the boundaries of the room. In this video, we'll do some more exotic panning, starting from now. Let's first move up in the middle of the room, going to the front height center. 
you see the yellow dot in the top front center corner. Now there might be some confusion of where you can hear this on your Dolby Atmos system, but if you have front, left and right height speakers against the wall, then you'll hear my voice in the phantom center between those two speakers. On the other hand, if you have a 7.1.4 system with four ceiling speakers, then you'll hear my voice between the top front left and top front right speaker in the phantom center between those two speakers. This is not to say that heights are better than tops or vice versa. It merely gives you an impression of how the Dolby Atmos panning will play back on your system. A mix will always be more complex than this naked mono voice that you're listening now in this Dolby Atmos demo. When a film has a car chase in a city with a flying helicopter overhead, sounds will come from all sides. That helicopter might start in the right front somewhere and then go to the height layer to pass by over your head and then maybe go to the left back. If your height layer consists of four speakers and they were height speakers mounted against the front wall and back wall, or four speakers top front left right and top rear left right, the flyover will probably work on both setups. So this was the playback with the ceiling speakers. We will now do the same with uh, the height speakers. And I will switch those with a router that I have here in the closet. So I can change the speakers now from ceiling to top and you will notice that I can also move the room here of the Atmos system and I will do this uh, during this next playback. In this video we're going to further explore the panning possibilities of a mono Dolby Atmos object. In the previous video the panning followed the boundaries of the room. In this video we'll do some more exotic panning, starting from now. Let's first move up in the middle of the room, going to the front height center. You see the yellow dot in the top front center corner. Now there might be some confusion of where you can hear this on your Dolby Atmos system, but if you have front, left and right height speakers against the wall, then you'll hear my voice in the phantom center between those two speakers. On the other hand, if you have a 7.1.4 system with four ceiling speakers, then you'll hear my voice between the top front left and top front right speaker in the phantom center between those two speakers. This is not to say that heights are better than tops or vice versa. It merely gives you an impression of how the Dolby Atmos panning will play back on your system. A mix will always be more complex than this naked mono voice that you're listening now in this Dolby Atmos demo. When a film has a car chase in a city with a flying helicopter overhead, sounds will come from all sides. That helicopter might start in the right front somewhere and then go to the height layer to pass by over your head and then maybe go to the left back. If your height layer consists of four speakers and they were height speakers mounted against the front wall and back wall, or four speakers top front left right and top rear left right, the flyover will probably work on both setups. Speaker positions are often depending on room size, shape, where there are. So this was the same playback um, but then with the height speakers. Um, it will be interesting to hear how this translates in binaural and this binaural version that you will hear on 360 is a real room um, so it's not an emulation of a, a binaural room it's a recording an actual recording that is recorded with ambisonics that, that i will um, alter with the facebook 360 workstation um, and i will uh, put that on the video upload it to youtube and then you can hear it 360 with special audio so you can also drag the screen around on a computer or a, a phone or even better when you can uh, see it and listen to it in a VR headset like uh, an Oculus Quest, Quest 2 or a Go or similar you can uh, 
watch around or look around in the space and also have the audio follow where you look. Um, the difficulty at this moment for uh, Dolby Mix engineers or Dolby Atmos Mix engineers that do uh, the music mixing is the fact that Apple uses this their own uh, translation system for uh, converting Dolby Atmos to binaural. So when you mix uh, in Dolby Atmos and you do a binaural render or you listen to the binaural render that you that you have the settings for in Dolby uh, Atmos and in the renderer, um, these settings are not freely used by Apple. So the playback will be different on uh, an iPhone or iPad uh, with spatial audio than what you hear in the binaural render, render of the Dolby Atmos uh, render. If you listen on Tidal to Dolby Atmos titles, this will be the actual Dolby render that you select during mixes. So it will, there will be a difference between those two and at this moment um, it's a bit of guesswork, so to say, how uh, it will translate. But the best way to do it at this moment is to copy the actual MP4 export uh, of a Dolby render to uh, an iOS device and listen how it translates with AirPods or uh, the AirPods Max or uh, AirPods Pros or the new third generation AirPods. I will end this video um, with a, a question for the home theater viewers. I will switch to the actual Blu-ray playback of this MP4 file, where I noticed when I played back the, the MP4 that I made available for download, when I played it back on a Panasonic um, HD Blu-ray uh, player, that the metadata, I think that is what happens, the metadata of the film light compression and this will also be nice to hear you have like a uh, motorcycle going outside the house so I'm wondering if you hear this in spatial audio as well as, as I can hear it here but um, as I was saying the Panasonic player when I put it in play you see the actual uh, mp4 that I uh, made available for download in pause. When I send this via HDMI to uh, Maran 7702, um, the Marans plays it back trimmed down and the trim down value is probably acting upon the film light compression that is rendered in the, uh, in the MP4 export during uh, the, the 768 kilobits per second uh, mp4 export that you can do in film or uh, music and this will be exported with film light compression or music light compression this compression is is, is metadata that is uh, used when you normally use the dynamic range reduction settings in your uh, avr um, for uh, night viewing um, this will uh, then gain right your mix so that you don't have uh, loud dynamic range uh, differences and uh, when you don't want to disturb the neighbors you can uh, watch a film with a dynamic range reduction or night mode as it's sometimes called on the AVR but somehow uh, this uh, these values are are activated in the in the file by the Panasonic player I think so when uh, you go in the Moran's settings uh, the Danon, uh, Danon has the same thing I think so you go into setup of the Moran's um, and you will see a menu in general uh, information audio this will have the stream playing back when I start the Blu-ray player it will show the Dolby Atmos Digital Plus stream and it has a offset value of minus 3 dB I'm wondering why this is and if you are seeing the, the, seeing the same thing with uh, other players on your setup Okay, I thank you for listening. I reserve the right to be totally wrong about things and we'll see you in the next video.